Yo, what is good, Dev guys? Welcome back. In this video, we are going to get started with navigating the land minefield of setting up a sprint ability. And I'm going to walk you through this. Just follow my steps. All right, so the first thing we want to do, and this, in my opinion, is the best way to go about doing this. See, right now, if I were to go to inside of somewhere in here, inside of Lyra right now, they have this ADS ability. And the way that they are altering the speed is that they're you know, they're getting the liar character from the act info, getting the character movement, and then setting the max walk speed to default max walk speed. And then they're altering the max walk speed. And then ultimately, whenever the ability is done, they set the, the walk speed to the default. What we want to do is remove the need to do anything with the max walk speed. Um, so if I can get to my code, that's my other project. So the first place we want to navigate to is this ability system folder. Let's go to the attributes folder and let's go down here to this health set. And I wish they would have done a better name and structure for Lyra. Uh, in my own project, I use a, a base attribute set and then also I use their health set. But yeah, what we're going to jump in here and do is just create another attribute here. So down here in this private section, they have the attributes. I'm going to copy this. You see it says hide from modifiers. We really don't want that. Uh, but I'm going to copy that anyways. And in reality, I don't think I want to make this private because I do want to be able to access this outside just in case here. So I'm not going to use this meta tag here. I'm going to delete this right here. This is going to be just attributes and change this to on rep move speed. And then this F gameplay attribute data is going to be our move speed. Now you see here, they got this attribute accessors. This allows us to uh, use getters and setters for this specific uh, attribute. Here I'm gonna say move speed and I spelled it wrong. Let me copy this one and paste it here. And then finally, we need to create a uh, replicated function. I'm gonna do it right underneath here. So you function void on rep underscore move speed. And it needs to bring in this const f gameplay attribute data, the old value. Then when we pop this puppy open, we'll implement it. And we pretty much can copy this right here because we want to do the same thing. We want to uh, change the move speed and the old value. We also want to come up in here where we are replicating these attributes. Copy one of these, go to the next line, and then we want to just say move speed. Um, here we initialize the attributes. Uh, so I'm also going to initialize our move speed. I'm going to initialize it to 600. Whoops, don't need that. Okay. So let me just look over this and see what else we need. We got pre gameplay effect execute, and then we got post gameplay effect execute. So here, this is about damage pretty much. Uh, we need to do another else if here. Else, whoops, not just else. Let me get rid of this too. So say else if, if I could type today. There we go. Else if, if this uh, data dot evaluated data and the attribute coming from that evaluated data is equal to the get move speed attribute. So if, if we adjust the move speed via a gameplay effect, uh, what we want to do is set our move speed in between fmath clamp. So we want to make sure we clamp this move speed in between the current move speed, which is get move speed. And we want to clamp it in between zero and I think we should set like a hard, maybe like 1200. 
0.0F for our move speed. So this will clamp our move speed to be no greater than 1200 and no less than uh, zero. So that's pretty much what we need to do for the first step. Now we need to navigate to where all of this stuff kind of comes together. And I wish they would have had a better naming structure for this. But if we, na if we navigate, I'm going to close this ability system folder. We don't need it anymore. We navigate to the character folder. We have this health component right here. So what we're going to do is create a function here that's similar to this here to get it's like a getter to get the information here. So I'm going to copy and paste that uh, U function declaration. I'm going to just change this to movement. And then what I want to do is say float get move speed. And this is just so we can access the move speed from other places. It's going to be const. It's just going to return a value. And pretty much I want to follow the same lines that they're doing here. They're basically returning if the health set is valid. Uh, if it is, we return get max health from the health set. If not, we return zero. So it's pretty much the same thing, except we're going to just change this to um, get move speed. And that's why I wish it had a better name and structure because the health set is kind of, you know, you know, how can I say it's tunnel vision for health. But uh, so pretty much this is what we want to do. Um, this allows us to create a uh, another function. And it's kind of like a daisy chain of getter functions. But this is just so that we don't have to cast inside of our movement component. And I'll explain that when we get to that. So the next place we want to go is to the character. And inside of the character, this is where we are going to actually use, like this getter is actually going to be used for uh, our movement component. So I'm going to make this U function here. i also make it blueprint callable. I might make it blueprint pure. Um, so I'm going to say blueprint callable, blueprint pure. It's just a float value. And this is going to be float get move speed. Let's make it const again. And pretty much what we want to do inside this function is check and see if we have a valid health component. It's the same code as that code inside of the health component, but instead of checking for the health set, we're checking for the health component. So if this is valid, then we want to return a health component that I get move speed. If not, we return zero. So finally, the final place where this all ends up is inside of the movement component, which is here, uh, right here. Whoops. So there's a function here that's called get max speed. And what this does is it basically every frame, it returns the max speed. Every frame, it runs this check right here. Every frame is running a, a if check to see if we have a valid uh, a, uh, ability system component. And then it checks to see if we have a tag that says movement stop. If it does, we return zero. That's every single frame. The reason why I did that daisy chain of getters is so that every single frame, we don't have to get our owner of this component, get the component on, get the health component from that owner, and then get the speed from the health component. Instead, we just get the owner and then get the speed and it'll do the rest for us. Since the owner already knows about the health component that saves us on casting. So what I'm gonna do here is say uh, float max speed is equal to our, uh, and what we need to do actually is we need a, a constant variable to our owning character as the liar character. So I'm say const a liar character. And that's going to include that in the header for me. And this is going to be our player character. And this is equal to a cast to the liar character using the character owner. And we can actually, I'm gonna say get owner. And, and now we can set our float max speed to our player character and we want to get the uh, the move speed. And now from now on, our max speed is no longer triggered by the max walking speed once we say return max speed. So this will eliminate the, it's saying I can make this const, but 
Uh, yeah, actually in this project, uh, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to set up the sprint the advanced way. I'm just going to show you a way that you can set up sprint. Um, the advanced way, if you guys want to see that code, definitely jump over in my Patreon. I do have access to my, to my like complete code source code of my Lara first person shooter where I use advanced techniques inside of the player movement component. It it's a little bit too in depth to explain in a series, this short and compact. So if you guys are interested in some more advanced codes, some more, some more, uh, ping friendly code, um, uh, then definitely jump over into my Patreon and I'll show you guys why uh, this method is not the best, uh, but it does work. So, now we're returning this max speed is returning this uh, movement speed, which is from our attribute set. So this is probably the last thing that we need to actually do inside the code. The next thing we need to do is actually build it and make sure everything gets compiled. Okay. That compiled successfully. I, I did get a warning about uh, the, it says the data member you health max health will be initialized after data member move speed. But one thing we can do here is test to see that our move speed is actually working properly. Uh, just to make sure, okay, you see here, okay, our move speed is working, but we're not using uh, max walk speed. We're using an attribute that we gave ourselves. So I'm gonna stop that. And now we can actually go into the sprint and set up the logic for adjusting that attribute via a gameplay effect. So I'm gonna go to shoot a core. I'm gonna go to where we created that sprint ability and let's get it started. And let's delete this here. Compile this. And right off the bat, what I wanna do is grab our liar character just in case we might need it. But pretty much what I wanna do here is pull off of here and say apply gameplay effect and let's apply a gameplay effect to the owner of this ability. You see, it's giving me a class that I can pass in and we haven't actually created that class. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to make a new folder for gameplay effects. And inside this folder, I'm going to right click, create a blueprint class, derive it from gameplay effect. We call it the GE underscore sprint speed. Save that, open it up. And I hate that it opens up as a regular blueprint. So I usually close it and open it up again. We want this to be infinite because for as long as this ability is active, we want this uh, effect to be active. So what it's going to do is it's going to modify our move speed. It's going to multiply it and we're going to multiply it. And let's say our moves, our sprint multiplier is maybe 1.4, something like that. So this will multiply our move speed by one times itself times 0.4 times itself and add it together. You guys know how the math works. So pretty much that's how we're going to sprint here. And I'm going to just get this sprint speed here and also, I want to save a cache to this uh, handle here. So whenever this ability ends, we will actually remove this gameplay effect. So let's say this is the sprint speed underscore GE. And since there's no way for us to actually end this ability because of the way that they have the input set up, um, what I'm going to do is pretty much make it a uh, toggle sprint. So what we're gonna do is apply the gameplay effect and then we're gonna wait on the input to be pressed again. This is acting as a toggle. So it's like I press it, I let it go, and then it'll wait for me to press it again. And once it presses, it will end the ability. So this is how you can kind of set up a toggle sprint. Uh, I'll show you a better way to set up a toggle sprint and give players the option to whether they wanna do a hold sprint or a toggle sprint in a later video. Uh, so when the ability ends, what we wanna do is grab this GE and we want to go ahead and say, remove this gameplay effect from owner with handle. And let's go ahead and do that. 
one thing that we could do to make this more secure is let the client activate this but only on the server as authority only on the server activate this um, this gameplay effect now the one thing about this system is when higher pings are introduced it will fail uh, or it will seem a little bit laggy uh, and i'll show that and we also want to i'm going to do this has authority check here as well okay and as a client we still want to check for the input release because the server technically won't uh do anything here so i'm gonna compile that and one thing that we need to do and i know this video is getting a little long so i'm gonna try to hurry it up one thing we need to do is go to our ability set let me control p we need to get our ability set and we need to get the shooter hero ability set. And what I want to do is just uh, remove our dash ability. And what I'm going to do is I'm I'm not going to remove it. I'm just going to remove the input tag from it so nothing can fire it. And then I'm going to save this. I'm going to jump in here and see if this works here. So we're moving. This is regular speed. And then I hit shift. And you see now we're sprinting. And if I hit shift again, we move at regular speed. And now we're sprinting. You can kind of see it. It was moving a little bit faster. If you're testing this, you'll see it. And, and I hold shift again. We're no longer sprinting. And one thing before I get out of here is I want to show you why you guys probably need to look at my more advanced code. I'm not just trying to sell the project, uh, even though I am trying to sell it. But uh, there, there are some more advanced techniques that take a lot of time to kind of teach someone. And for them to understand, you have to answer a lot of questions so it's just easier to just sell the complete project uh, but one thing we want to do is just go into the editor preferences and say emulation and it's not letting me am i still playing not letting me do anything here wait what is going on uh let's say play Okay, let me see here. It huh, that's weird. I've actually never seen that grayed out before. Like this, I've never seen it grayed out. Yeah, usually you can come in here and introduce networking issues. What? I don't know why that's grayed out. I can't actually explain it to you. Huh. Oh, you wanna know why? It's because we're running as a uh, standalone. I'm gonna play as a client, and then this should be open for me. There we go. Okay, so when we're playing as a client, now we're introducing some ping right here. And you probably won't see it Probably won't feel it, uh, but it will lag a little bit. So, you see that? Did you see that? Uh, it's very hard to to kind of see it. So I'm gonna move at regular speed, and then I'm gonna sprint. And it's actually not too bad at this ping. I think we're at. But you see that that little lag right there? That's a that's a rubber band. And right now we're at 105 ping. And a lot of your players will be playing around 105 ping. A lot of your players probably won't have like. 25 ping or you know 78 ping or a good a good ping uh, but let's let's go ahead and introduce more ping so i'm gonna call it, say 60 here 120 and say 60 here and 120. normally this is about the the latency most people be playing in between 60 and 120 so i'm gonna play go full screen and you'll probably feel a little bit more here so if i hit shift you see that little jitter right there right there as well um it kind of will mess up the 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 player being in the world pretty much so yeah definitely take a look at that more advanced code uh, but that's pretty much all i wanted to cover in this video uh, in the next video, I, I want to get rid of this uh, this issue with the inputs. It's going to require us to do some coding. I hope you guys are ready for that. And if you are, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.